Hey, this is Annie. And Samantha. And welcome to Stuff I Never Told You, a production of iHeartRadio. And welcome to another Monday Mini, where I take over and talk about cozy gaming. Yes. Y'all is still around. People still love it. I, I we need to have, we need to bring some experts on here. Actually, the creator of a cozy game um, has been doing a campaign because her game, I think, was being released at the same time a huge studio was releasing their stuff. So it kind of like out coveraged her stuff to the point that she's really upset about it. But she's got a 1.1 million views, um, and the game is named Potions: A Curious Tale which I am interested in looking at getting. Um, and it's an indie game. I want to download it and I want to get it. She's talking about how EA has been releasing a lot of games at the same time that she had planned. And she's been talking about it for a minute. Like, I've seen this game. I've seen her do really cute ads, TikTok videos to try to advertise it. She's done live action interpretations of what the game looks like. So it's like a witchy game do potions and I do want to try it so I just want to shut that game out there I don't know much about the developer I don't know what about I think her, her, her name is Renee um, and I don't know everything and the details behind it I don't know about much about the game I do like I said I want to look for it um, it's available now so I will be looking for it uh, but you know it, it does make me sad when I see someone who's worked so hard at content like this and, and gaming like this especially for an industry that is not welcoming uh, to women or marginalized people. So, you know, I'm going to look into it a little more, but just that, put that as a sideline as a beginner because I feel <laughs> like I need to remind myself of going into these games. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. But today I'm pretty much just talking about cozy games, not necessarily phone games because, you know, I'm obsessed with phone games and I play that a lot. But I've picked back up the Switch. Y'all, I'm not going to lie. My island from Animal Crossing looks really bad. <laughs> Flowers everywhere. Weeds. All the weeds everywhere. Um, I, I, Here's the thing, and I've confessed to this before. I've figured out two things about my dislikes in video gaming and gaming in general. You know, if it's too complicated and I have to compete and have to kill things, I'm not good at it. So I don't like that. If you don't give me objectives... I'm not good about creating. I am not a very creative person. Like, there are things that I'm like, yes, this is what I want to do. When it comes to speaking and writing, that makes sense to me. When it comes to actual, like, art, visual arts, I am not good. I really wish I was. I like, some of the pictures that I drew as a kid probably look make me look like a manic uh serial killer but it's okay because i'm not just say that's how bad they are or how eccentric <laughs> they may seem to be um, all of that to say so now that i finish all the objectives with animal crossing you know they tell you to do this they tell you to fill the uh museums so i've gotten all of the bones all the bones are there i'm done with that i haven't gotten all the bugs and i haven't gotten all of the uh like creatures sea creatures because, you know, they're seasonal. And so since I'm not on it every day, like for a minute that I was, I can't get to them. Like we're back to the season I originally started with, which I've gotten all of those things. So now I could do the time jumping, which is a lot. Or I just have to wait. So like with that, and then you're supposed to build the island and make it look pretty. I don't know how to do that. My friend, shout out to Matt, he has the best island I have ever seen. Like, it is so... I did bust up his rocks and he got mad at me, as he should be, because I didn't know how to get the <laughs> material out without busting it, because I didn't right. realize when you eat the fruit, it makes you super strong. I figured it out now. <laughs> uh, but, like, one of the best islands I've seen. And then when you, you know, when you can go to sleep and go visit other islands, mm -hmm. they put my island to shame. It's so bare. But I don't want it to be too built up. I want it to be a retreative, like, island. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So my Animal Crossing is not great, Annie. <laughs> you should see my island now. I need to come visit. Did you build it up? Is it built up? It's built up. I got the oh. five stars. I got the <gasps> flowers. Yeah. You got five stars? You want to come build my island? It's a Star Wars-based island. I no know. surprise. 
the only thing I have before I complete, I just have four, no, three, three art pieces left. I've done everything else. You've done, well, I haven't gotten the art pieces either. Now that you say the that. art pieces take forever. Yeah, because you have to go buy the, and then you have to, like, I do the cheating and try to make sure they're real. So I go no, through yeah. the phone to find which ones, because I've been, I've been duped. You've been duped? I've been duped twice. Oh. It's not nice. <laughs> it's not nice. <laughs> Terrible. How dare you, you I don't fox. know if I, I ever told you this, but um, one of your, I've, I never have had the heart to kick someone off my island. <laughs> one of your people that you kicked off your island <laughs> came to me. Well, how did you find that out? Because it said they came from Samantha's island. <laughs> I so she lives there off. now. I didn't kick them off. I think it's like they were asking, I just want to try, I just wanted to do Grand Adventure. And I didn't know what that meant. I was like, yeah, go for it. Because that's, that's the way you respond. And like, it's, right. a, it's an encouraging thing. And I didn't realize what it would do. And she left. I was like, well, damn. I, I did yep. kick off a wolf because he was mean to me. He was mean to me. <laughs> He kept, like, just criticizing me. I was like, damn, what is wrong with you? (laughs) I will not have that on my island. Bad energy goes. You've got some standards. You've got some standards. You can't be mean to me on my own (laughs) island. How dare you? So I did, I think I kicked out two people. And, like, one one was on purpose, one was on, like, oh, I didn't know what this does type of moment. Well, so it sounds like the one you didn't know what it does. Is it the dog? She lives with me. No, it's a. What would that be? A sheep of some kind. Really? I'm trying to remember. <laughs> you, maybe you've kicked out more people than you know. I didn't realize. Well, that's what it said when she showed up. It was like, this is a sheep of some kind. Wow, they're telling on me. I didn't know that was uh-huh. a thing. Now that is like a whole shape factor. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, so that is my Animal Crossing update because I'm really, I'm really bad about trying to build up the land and island and creating things in pathways. Like I have random things just hanging about. There's a locker in the middle of nowhere because they just give me things. I just want to get rid of it. There's a table with a book on it. Like I was like, I don't know what to do with this. Just <laughs> Why? So we have that uh, on my island. Uh, I don't it's funny because when I visited your island, I was like, I'll never be. I, I still, the memory I have of your island is better than my island. No, so that's not true. I don't know why you well, think that. It is sparse and a little bit sad. But I like it that way. That's how I did yeah, it. Well, I liked it too. Maybe I'll be motivated one day, but like, it's just... I'm, I'm bad. Like, I, there's a game that I played on my phone that you also build your island in that. Um, and it's just crowded. And it makes no sense. But I have to have all the stuff on there so I can get points. <laughs> <laughs> it makes no sense. <laughs> but it's okay. But here are some of the favorites that I have been playing recently. And one of them is called Lemon Cakes by uh, Cozy Bee Games. Super cute. Super cute. So this is the description that they have about their game. It says, while the bakery might initially be broken, and it is broken, overgrown, and even haunted, don't worry. You'll be able to repair, furnish, and decorate every room in the bakery, gather honey from your beehive, raise a cow to collect fresh milk, and adopt a few chickens to add eggs to your recipes. You'll also be able to grow trees and plants to harvest a variety of fruits, mix ingredients together to prepare all kinds of recipes, including baked pastries, candies, and frozen desserts. Be sure to serve your customers quickly and keep your window displays well-stocked so you don't miss out on any order. Serve coffee to impatient customers to keep them around the bakery a bit longer and build a, an adorable cat cafe to make everyone's day brighter. So I have been playing this game. Essentially, every day, it's like you quickly wake up, you quickly bake things, put things in display and try to keep up. And it's pretty hard. I, 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 I definitely had my thumbs sore trying to keep up with all these. But there's really cute cats that you can pet. Um, I do have some plants in a very broken greenhouse, but, it, you know, it's working. You have to, like, you don't get a lot of money or maybe I don't get a lot of money because I'm not good at it. 
because <laughs> it's about based on the sales um, of the day. Uh, so I don't like I've gotten four like I've just gotten four recipes that are pretty well done, two ovens that work, and then like two ghosts that come to see me. One ghost is the former owner, Bonbon, bon, I believe, and one ghost is a is an inspector. Uh, and health inspector, and he often tells me to catch bugs, and I have to ca- catch bugs, and I'm not really good at that either, because my <laughs> aim is off. Apparently, like I, what I think I'm supposed to be aiming, I'm not supposed to. <sighs> it's kind of hard, but it's really cute. It's really bright uh, game. It has a daily objective for me to like give out. So it's kind of like it could be monotonous, except you do uh, get to buy cows to do like the milking and such. And then you have the fruits to add and then having the customers come through. It's, it's quite cute. And the thing is just mindless enough with just enough activity that it's fun to play. So it's not as it's it's um, overcooked without partners and as much stress. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Every time I've ever played Overcooked uh, with my partner, thank goodness he knows. He's trying to make me like games, so he would never be mean to me. But because I'm like, I, I'm done. I'm over this. I'm Once over when I was I was hanging out with you both, it came up that you might play it. And I was like, wow. Because <laughs> that, that's a game that can get real intense. <laughs> I got so mad about the uh, other game. What was it? The robo- robots one? Florence? Oh, Portal. Portal. Yes, hate that Florence. <laughs> what, what is the name of that robot that's mean to me? Why? Are you, why are robots? Why are these games mean to me, Annie? Oh wow, um, that's a great question. You know, I think you need you need a <laughs> villain or someone to to be, be a against. villain to someone else, not me. <sighs> <sighs> but yeah, so that's one game that I'm playing. Portal is not that game. I will never play Portal again. I'm still oh, angry Portal's about so it. Fun. I hate it. Oh, hate it with a passion. Geez. You know what I've no. discovered between this game and a short hike, which has been recommended to me, and I did play on the on the Steam Deck. It's games that where I can fall off that I really hate because hmm. <laughs> I'm really bad at it. So for the beginning of the short hike, it was fine. Find these things. You have to jump here. Go that. I'm like, I'm pretty bad about figuring out how to jump because I don't understand. <laughs> mm-hmm. the dual usage the multi-usage of all the buttons and I'm like why am I doing all these things that if, I, if there's a chance that I can fall off of a thing I'm gonna fall off of that thing um, and it's gonna take me forever to get to that objective to not follow that thing and I figured out I don't like that because it makes me very angry <laughs> and impatient mm-hmm. and so I fall off of it more which we've seen in our Mario uh, party in that that game. Well, yes, Mario Kart too, Annie. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> but Mario, also Mario party, party. Well, you know where that one objective you have to go across the way to yes. get to. I know exactly every time. what you're every talking time. about. Every time, yeah. I fall that off. That was tough, and I hate it so much. And like my partner and you, because you're used to like just being able to go fast, go, and I'm like inching, like not even inching, like <laughs> just tiny steps. At a time to try not to <laughs> fall off, and I still fall off. Yeah, okay. I have I have another friend who's made this exact same complaint about the jumping <laughs> and the falling off. So you're not alone. You're not alone. <laughs> not good at it. <laughs> but another game that I do like that I don't fall off thank you, is uh, Cozy Grove by Spry Fox, which I feel like I may have talked about before. It's actually one of my favorite games. I did start playing it at the same time that I played, uh, started Animal Crossing. So it's similar in that le- level of like, you have to get the fish, you can get, the, but your the collection is different. So this, there's no museum. And Uh, This is how they describe the game, uh, Spry Fox. It says, Welcome to Cozy Grove, a life sim game about camping on a haunted, ever-changing island. As a spirit scout, you'll wander the island's forest each day, finding new hidden secrets and helping soothe the local ghosts. With a little time and a lot of crafting, you'll bring color and joy back to Cozy Grove. So the the ghosts are all bears, but they're like themed bears. So like they'll dress up as other things. So I think one looks like a pelican, but it's still a bear. 
<laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. So one looks like a daisy, but it's still a bear. But, mm-hmm. you know, I was trying to recommend Cozy Games to uh, uh, my partner's coworker for their kids. And this game came up in my head because it's super cute. Like, the whole scenery is really cute. Uh, the music's fun. I don't, I felt they have, like, objectives per game and you have to get like the spirit logs to give to your campfire and it tells you like where to go essentially but the stories about these bears that died they're intense like one of the stories had talked about how he was being blamed for his family's death and like that's always haunted him and i was like what the hell (laughs) so i thought i like i took a moment and was like do I recommend that to kids? Is this for, like, is this, I know some games are just for adults. Is this game for adults only? Like, it doesn't, the coloring, the animation wouldn't imply that to me. But mm. at the same time, these storylines of some of these bears are really intense and sad. Oh, I won't go into my whole tangent about this, but I feel like a lot of stuff we enjoy as kids does involve death. Yeah. Um. And when you look back at it as an adult, you're like, whoa. But when you're a kid, you're just sort of like, obviously. Okay. Yeah, because you can skip <laughs> over these stories. But as I was like reading some of them, I'm like, dang, when Bear got killed for his treasure. And I was like, that seems really intense. But I guess you're right. Like a lot of our animated films that like, I'm still traumatized by Land Before Time and I still not, will not watch that. Or Bambi. How dare you? <laughs> yeah. <sighs> I I'm also interested that you've, Two of the games you've listed ghosts. have ghosts are haunted. I don't know if that's a theme with cozy games. Uh-huh. I don't, because I feel like there's a lot of games that are like haunted or this thing or like dark, dark past that you need to unravel. Huh. I guess you would have more knowledge than like me. Like a lot of them seem like that. Interesting. Or, you know, trying to find people, find things, uh, yeah. uncover mysteries. Yeah. This is, we should come back and talk about this later then, because now you've got me really interested because a lot of the ones you've suggested to me, now that I think about it, do have pretty, like, adult mystery murder vibes. You've, like, put, like, asterisks of, like, this might be, we need to come back yeah. to it. Okay, but another game, which is kind of that same level, and we've already played the first one, which is the Coffee Talk, uh, episode one. I have gotten into Coffee Talk Episode 2, just started. So it's called Coffee Talk Episode 2, Hibiscus and Butterfly. So I'm only in like Chapter 1 or 2. Still great. The animation is wonderful. Uh, I just started the dialogue. So we had that big mystery unravel in the first one. Uh, I'm guessing there's something similar to that on this one. This time, the first... It's already kind of eerie. There was a thunderstorm happening. There's a dude who is an influencer that has an agent that's coming on. And then this uh, siren, I think, is what she is, comes in. And she is not a happy person thus far. Like, <laughs> something is half happened. I think she's, I think there's the whole thing about, like, cyberbullying. I was like, oh, okay. Interesting. Okay. Uh, they've introduced pea flowers or pea uh, flower tea. And I've already messed up a drink. I was already oh. told that I did not drink the, get the drink right. It was not good. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so for listeners who don't know, we have talked about this in previous episodes, but essentially coffee talk is like you're making drinks while people tell you. And there's like vampires and werewolves. and Yes. And you're just making drinks and you're trying to get the drinks right while they, they talk to you. Right. So... <laughs> Huh. Right. messed up a drink. So I feel like I'm going to need to go back. But also, it's supposed to, like, cover present-day Seattle. It's around my birthday, Mm -hmm. actually. And I think the last one was around my birthday, too. Um, And, uh, like, 2023. And then it's it's a very, like, obvious take on, like, uh, racism um, and prejudice in general. Except we have, yes, different species. So we have, like, again, last time we had vampires, we had werewolves, we had aliens. One one real alien dude, like, who was trying to pretend to be human so he mm-hmm. could mate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Y'all need to go back on our last episode because this does not make sense uh, <laughs> outside of. But, yeah, so I've started that. And it's definitely, like, has, like, um, 80s, 90s vibe of uh, animation. 
and the way it speaks to you. It's like typed out and such. It's really fun. It's very relaxing. To me, this is one of those games that I can sit in my bed getting ready to go to bed and play and not be over the top about it. But like it has definitely come up as one of like my favorites. And I'm really glad they did have a second rendition. I'm hoping that it continues because when it ends, it's not one of those replayable game. I mean, it is because you can try to figure out the drinks, but you're not discovering anything new, um, essentially. But like, I think it's interesting that these games are are developing and still coming out. But like I said, because uh, Coffee Talk 1 was so successful, they came out with a second one. Again, I'm hoping that it'll continue on. And I'm still looking for other games to try. Again, I want to try that one we talked about at the beginning of the episode um, because we want to talk about indie creators. And I'm, I'm hoping that we find more indie creators and especially those from the marginalized communities being a part of this and that they aren't going to be overshadowed by the big companies, although inevitably it does happen, but that maybe we can um, shine more light on that. So with that, as you can tell, now you kind of, have a better feel, and I have a better feel of what I prefer in uh, cozy games. Is there suggestions or people out there or games out there that I need to be finding and playing and 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 loving and putting on my lists? Yes, you know, listeners, we love those suggestions. I have a bunch of board games that I'm dying to play that I got based on listener suggestions. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we really do take them into account. If you have suggestions for Samantha or me or both of us, um, please let us know. You can email us at stuffmediamomstuff at iheartmedia.com. You can find us on Twitter at momstuffpodcast or on Instagram and TikTok at Stuff One Never Told You. We have a tea public store and we have a book where we do talk about video games. Um, you can get it wherever you get your books. Thanks as always to our super producer, Christina, our executive producer, Maya, and our contributor, Joey. Thank you. And thanks to you for listening. Stuff I Never Told You is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, you can check out the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. 